Spazio Your Rock, what's up? Uh, mi chiamo Adamo. Mi chiamo Hannes. Uh, Hannes? <laughs> You're fucking... <laughs> uh, all right, so... All cool. Uh, uh, you guys take care now. Keep supporting rock. Rock and roll. Hi everybody, we are now with Royal Republic once again. Last year they rocked right here at the Rock and Roll Club in Milan. And tonight uh, uh, they are gonna play the new material from the new record, Save the Nation. Hi guys, Hello. how are you? Welcome to, good, welcome to Italy again. Thank you. What's happened along last year? What's happened along the last year? Well, a lot of shit happened. We uh, made a new album. Uh, mm -hmm. And we toured like idiots. I think, yeah, we never stopped touring really. We had like a break for a month or something like that over Christmas. Yeah. Then we went back on the road. Mm -hmm. So it's been pretty much non-stop. But uh, the new album's out and we're really happy with that. Before we talk uh, about the new album, I must admit that after a couple of years, We Are The Royal still sounds fresh and exciting. And that's great. Um, you, have you changed the way of writing songs? Or it's the same? No, I, I don't think we changed the way we write songs. The thing was with Save the Nation, uh, I mean, the main difference between the two albums is Save the Nation is recorded pretty much live in the studio, and We Are the Royal was recorded like the, you know, the way, the modern way that you make records today. You just sit down and first you do the drums, and then you do the bass, and then you add the, and you make sure everything's perfect, kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, we did not do that on Save the Nation, but we, I mean, we toured for two and a half years, three years on We Are The Royal, and through all that touring, we kind of discovered what we sound like and what we want to sound like on the record. So that's why we recorded the second album live. And the writing was, uh, I don't know, I feel, I feel a bit more like we know what we're doing this time. <laughs> First time was pretty much just ah, all over the place. And now it's a bit more dynamic and it's a bit, you know, it's a bit more real. Um, It took less time to write it um, with respect to We Are The Royal. Well, we really didn't have an option because, you know, there's always these deadlines that you have to keep track of. And uh, this time around, we were kind of... Uh, it was a tight schedule, to say the least. Uh, but, I mean, uh, we worked our asses off and sometimes it just... It took a while for us to get the whole process going. But once we did, it kind of, you know... It just kind of came to us. So, mm. would you introduce the new record with your favorite song of Save the Nation? My favorite song of Save the Nation. Well, yesterday uh, my favorite song of the album was uh, 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 "This Means War," and I guess today it's uh, "Make Love, Not War." Me too. Yeah, it's my choice. And you? Yeah, I guess uh, I guess I'd go for somewhat the same. I mean, your favorites favorites change all the time when, when you when it's your record. And I, Astronaut was my favorite for a while. Make Love has been a favorite for a long time. I think that might that might still be my favorite. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that one too. Um, my impression is that Save the Nation is not just the second part of the first album. It's more personal for the style. Do you agree? <laughs> yeah, I, I think like. Like I said, we wanted something that was a little bit more dynamic, a little more up and down, uh, because the first album was just... And we felt we needed some up and down, basically, especially when we were on tour on the, you know, on the live shows. So um, some of the lyrics are... I mean, we're not, it's not political and it's not like, ooh, you know, soul-wrenching in that way, but it's more like observations that we made. For instance, Everybody Wants to Be an Astronaut is about, you know dreams that you have when you're a kid and then when you grow up it's like you can't reach your dreams anymore and it's uh, be boring and you ain't nobody till somebody hates you it's also one of those like you know all the famous people being even more famous after they're dead or when people you know when they're in scandals when the newspapers yeah. so it, uh, you know some of that stuff so it's a little bit more grown up i guess just a but it's little. like yeah and i mean we've only been around for what four years yeah so i mean we're still kind of finding ourselves musically i guess that takes a while probably and i think we're we're uh, we're on a good way but who knows where we'll end up in 10 years you never know right and that's 
I I love that kind of thing. I think that that's kind of what we said too when we started writing for this album. Let's not like close ourselves in, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Let's stay completely. Try to stay as open as we can to new ideas and yeah. you know from wherever and I just expand. Maybe not change everything, but just expand. expand you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of getting stuck in a sound or stuck in a s type of songwriting, mm -hmm. we want to like in the long run, it would be awesome if we could do pretty much whatever we want and people would just accept it anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to ask you. What's the secret ingredient in order to become a great live band? You should have seen some old footage. Remember, we were <laughs> yeah, watching yeah, this yeah. a couple of nights ago. Adam found it on his computer. Like the second second rehearsal or so, we actually put up one of these cameras this and we filmed, yeah, <laughs> filmed what was actually going on while we were playing. And we looked like fucking dicks. It's, like, <laughs> it's not even funny. But it, I don't. What like, happened along the way? But the, th I, th but the thing thing was, we really rehearsed. Like even before we even had it, our first show, we had rehearsed. How many How many rehearsals did we have before we even did A the lot, first show? Yeah. Like fifty, yeah. fifty something rehearsals. You know, with five songs, just <laughs> rehearsing five songs. over and over and over again. And then it was not about you know learning the songs because mm -hmm. that we could do in ten two minutes, but perfecting and like really getting it in the spine. You know, mm -hmm. so. I'd, just, I'd say just rehearse your fucking ass off and really like be critical and get all the stuff right, like all the small details. That's mm -hmm. it. Royal Republic can be defined truly rock and roll. So I, I want, <laughs> I'm so curious to listen your answer, to listen to your answer to those artists that recently uh, said that the future of rock is in electronic music or in dubstep what's your answer about that i i don't know but i guess it, it's like everything else i mean there are ups and downs and you know one year you're supposed to wear your jeans by the knees at the knees and next year you're supposed to wear them at the waist i guess it's the same thing with rock and roll talking like mainstream music and what the radio plays stuff like that rock and roll is is struggling right now on the radio and tv and stuff but i mean the scene is as big as ever you know there are these awesome places all over the place all over the world so i'm not worried about that to be honest i'd like to know uh, a nice episode oh. you remember uh, happened during your tours oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just the thing. It's always the same. No yeah. offense, but we get this question quite a lot, and there's still no... We don't have an awesome story. <laughs> no. Nothing ever happens. We need... I mean, Nothing. tonight might be the night where something happens, <laughs> and we'll let you know after the yeah, interview. Like, <laughs> we never... It's either we're lucky or we're unlucky. I don't know, but, but it's, I mean, a lot of shit could have happened, and we, and we could have like been really... You know, we could have been hurt or killed or whatever. So we're pretty lucky, yep. but we're also very unlucky that we don't have a single cool road story what? yet. We've I'm disappointed. Of well, course you are as well. It sucks. Come on. <laughs> but it's like what, what, it almost happened like a bunch of times. Remember, we were we were heading through uh, Switzerland uh, to do a festival in Gampel a couple of months ago. Yeah, that was cool. And we were driving through the Alps. We were sleeping on our tour bus, and our crew woke us up. Everybody off the bus, get up, wake up. And there was smoke in the, in the, in the cabin. <laughs> we were like, oh shit, you know, it's, the bus is on fire. A and we stopped and we got out. And this was like 20 minutes before we got into the Alps, you know, the slippery, slopery, small roads. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that our, the bus brakes had burnt up. Uh -oh. So that was like really lucky. If that would have happened 20 minutes later, we would have most likely like crashed down the Alps and stuff. And we've... But we would have again, sold a million copies of the album. Exactly. <laughs> but again, it almost happened, so it didn't count. <laughs> okay. So we're, we're still alive, and nobody gives a shit. Like, oh. So the answer is no. We don't have a story. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your time. You. you guys take care now. Keep supporting rock, rock and roll. Peace. Everybody wants to show a brother what they got. Everybody wants to be. La, la, la.